This morning, we're going to continue the message of the Holy Spirit. And my subtopic is going to be many are called, but few are chosen. Okay. And you can be seated. Coming from Matthew chapter 22. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like an, a, a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden or invited to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all that things are ready come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. And they, their way, they went their ways, and one hit to his farm and another to his merchandise. They disregarded the invitation. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitely and killed them. But when the king heard, this, heard thereof, he was wroth, And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready. But they which were bidden or invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the uh, highways, and as many as you folk shall find, bid them to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And the king came to see the guest. And he saw that there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, friend, how camest thou hither not having a wedding garment? And that was that were provided for you. And he was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There she be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And so there's a difference from being called and being chosen. Being called means that you're invited. Being chosen means that you are one who is an object of choice or one of the divine favor or an elect person. Now, I want to talk about one that was chosen, but trying to act like he was called. Okay. And so Minister Marcus is going to read, I mean, Minister Miller is going to read Jonah chapter one for me. Now the words of the Lord came unto Jonah, son of Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against them. For their wickedness, has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found the ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them to the Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Okay, stop right there. So Jonah went and tried to get away from God. Now, he was chosen, not called. So I don't know how he thought that he was going to get away from the presence of God. See, when you're called, that means you're invited. You don't really have to do what God has called. You just called. But when you're chosen, you don't have a choice. Amen. You have to do what God has called you to do. So Jonah bought his little ticket, and then he went to Joppa and bought his ticket. And then what did he do? He went on the ship, and then what else did he do? Go to the yeah, and then what else? What came after that? I think I don't know. Did he go to sleep on the boat? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But the Lord sent out the great winds into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest into the sea. 
so that the ship was like to be broken. Yeah. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God to cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to light it of them. Mm -hmm. But Jonah was thrown down into the side of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Okay, there, we'll stop right there. So Jonah went down on the side of the boat and fell asleep. And so as he was sleeping, God was loud for this storm, this tossing and turning and tossing. Mm -hmm. And Jonah slept through the whole thing with his selfish self. Okay, he was a selfish person. Mm -hmm. So then they woke him up and said, pray to your God to stop this thing. And then, so what happened, minister? And they said, everyone to his fellow, come let us cast lots, that we may know for those cause this evil is upon us. All right. Right. So they cast lots, and the lots fell upon Jonah. Okay, go ahead. Then they said unto them, unto them, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause is evil upon us, what is thy occupation? And whence comest thou, what is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who have made the sea and the dry land. <laughs> then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou, thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee? That we see that the sea may become unto us. For the sea rock, rock, and the tempest. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. Okay. Continue. So shall the sea become unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rolled hard to bring it to the land, mm -hmm. but they could not, for the sea brought and tempted against them, against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us incorrect blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered the sacrifices to the Lord and made vows. Okay, so it's just like Jonah said. They cast him into the sea, and then everything ceased. And it was because of him that the storm and the raging happened. And then so... God caused what? A whale to swallow Jonah, right? And he was uh, in the whale's belly for three days and three nights. And then all of a sudden, Jonah started praying. Mm -hmm. But if he had done what God told him the first time, he wouldn't have ended up like he had, correct? So then what happened? Then Jonah went to the people of Nineveh, Nineveh and did what God told him. And they pray, preached to the people. Uh -huh. And then what happened? Everybody what? Repented. Okay. So when you are chosen, like I said, you have to do what God has called you to do. Yeah. Just in case you didn't know, Kingdom Transformation is a chosen church. Yeah. So you're not sitting in a, re a regular church. This church has been chosen by God. So many are called, but few are chosen. Something like, okay, God, many are called. So when you're called, you can live your life how you want it. When you're called, you can come to church in and out like you want it. Because there's no requirement that is on you. But when you're chosen, you can't 
live like you want to. Amen. When you're chosen, you can't do the old things like you used to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you my testimony. So I know for a long time I have been chosen, chosen. But I'm like, I'm not, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, I didn't want to do what God called me to do. So I went to hang out with some of my friends. Come on, girl, let's go to the club. Went. And I felt so uncomfortable in that place. And I'm like, I tried to take a drink. It was so disgusting to me. Then some guy tried to come and talk to me. And I was like, uh -uh, uh uh, go away, go away. You know, I didn't want to see him talking to me. And then he just said, get up and get out of this place because you're not meant to be here. Mm -hmm. So I left from the club. And I had to go home and do what? Repent. Yeah, now, when I repented, I saw these little black things walking around in my house. And I'm like, what is this going on? I'm looking. I'm like, Lord, what is this? He said, when you came home, you allowed demonic spirits to come into your house. Okay, so then I had to pray and tell the spirits to leave my home. So if you're called and you're disobedient, there's a price that you have to pay. Amen. Being called, you cannot continue as you did before. Now I want you to go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. <laughs> when you have it, please say amen. Can you read it? <laughs> read it. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that ye <laughs> present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay. Acceptable means to receive with favor, well-pleasing to take pleasure in. So it has to be if acceptable, means God receives it with favor or it is well-pleasing or to take pleasure in. So we must present our bodies a living sacrifice. Okay, so what does this have to deal with the Holy Ghost, Minister Wilson? The Holy Spirit comes to do what? reside inside of us. Is that what Dr. Jesus told us that he was going to do? Amen. He comes to live inside of us. Yeah. And so when he lives inside of us, you cannot contaminate your body. First Corinthians 16, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter 6, I'm going to read 15 to 20. Do you not, I'm sorry, let me, when you have it, please say amen. We're doing First Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 15 to 12. Amen. <coughs> Amen. You have it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Am I therefore to take the members of Christ and make them part of a prostitute? Certainly not. Do you did you not know that one the one who joins himself to a prostitute? I'm reading the Amplified. Is one body with her? For he says the two shall become one flesh. So I'm going to give you an example. Susie sleeps with Bob. Bob sleeps with Angie. Angie sleeps with John. John sleep, sleeps with Donisha. So this means that Susie and Bob, Bob have become one flesh. Mm -hmm. But you have all these other people that are attached to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even for the man, men, Tony sleeps with Jane. Jane sleeps with Sam. Sam sleeps with Roberta. And she sleeps with Jethro. So Tony and Jane have become one. And everybody is attached to them. So you're wondering, you might have broke up with that person. They broke up with these people. Then you ask, but well, why do I keep con 
had drawn the same kind of people. Women, why do I keep drawing the same kind of men? Why do I, men, why do I keep drawing the same kind of women? Because of the soul ties. Yeah. All these people have been connected to you. Mm -hmm. So now what do you need to do? You need to do some fasting and praying and ask God to break those soul ties. Okay? Because of the soul ties that have not been cut. So as you can, if you continue to sleep with people, you start gathering more people. Then it looks like to you, if you look like at yourself, or we look at you, I'm sorry, in the spirit, we look at you in the spirit, we see 50 or 60 people. <laughs> well, is not what Paul said, if you, come, you find yourself with a prostitute. This is true, correct? Same thing with adultery. Only difference with adultery is, is that you have broken your covenant with your wife or husband. And so, because marriage is honorable to the Lord, but when you break it, it's broken. And so, therefore, I think that that is just as bad as fornication to God. So what do you need to do after you break the soul tie? This means that you have to wait for God to send you the right person if you're single. Married, married people, you're not supposed to commit adultery. So you need to pray. And then you also need to do some counseling, counseling with apostles and prophets. But if you're single, you need to, um, like I said, Right. And also then once you get the soul tie broken, then you need to keep your body because of the fact your body is the what temple of the Holy Ghost. So now you met somebody. Right. And you feel like, OK, this is the one. Do not practice fornication again. Right. right. right? You are not a sample platter. Right. You're not throwing samples out there. Oh, I know nobody want to hear my message today, but it's okay because I have to tell you the truth of what God gave me. So because if you're chosen, God is going to, you break kind of, when you do this, you break a covenant with God. He wants you to split, save your body, present your body as a living sacrifice. And it said holy, right? Yeah, holy. Let me say it one more time. Holy unto God. That's your reasonable service, right? Yeah. Okay. And you're in Kingdom Transformation Church. And this church, like I said, is a called church. So if you keep going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, and you think that you cannot, or that you're not responsible for what you do, yes, you are. Because this church, you can't come in, in and out and don't think you're not going to be judged by God. Because there's too many people in here that have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And God will tell them what you're doing in your business. Don't think that he won't. But the first thing, like I said, you have to fast and pray. Break the soul ties and stop fornicating. And that's it. And stop tossing your body back and forth like you're a sample platter. Now, verse 17 said, but one who is united with uh, and joined to the Lord is one spirit. Run away from sexual immortality, immorality in any form, whether thought or behavior, whether visual or written. So it's, everything is in there as far as I'm concerned. Watching movies on TV, reading books, visualizing things on the Internet. Correct. Because you, what does it say? The sin, every sin that a man commits is outside the body. But the one which is sexual, sexual immoral, immoral, immorality sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is within you? You have 
received a gift from God and that you are not your own property. Amen. You were bought with a price and you were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made you were made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. Amen. All right. Amen. So in this life, like I said, we are called, but we became chosen. So how come people that are called? Because God, we have a free will. When we're called, you should want to be want to become chosen. But the only way you're going to become chosen is to do what? Be obedient to God. That's the only way. Obedience and obey his word. If you guys can't continue, I mean, we're talking to people on Facebook, you can't continue doing the same things that you've done. Time is too short. Time is too short. Amen. For you to continue, and tomorrow is not promised to you. Amen. So you don't know this week if you're going to be here or not. Is that right? Amen. So you need to have your business in order with God. Another thing, if you want to say, okay, you know, I did this, guys, I repent, and then you continue to do it, that is not repentance. Repentance means what to turn away from. Amen. Not to continue to do it, and then, I'm sorry, God, do it, I'm sorry, God, do it, and I'm sorry, God. God is like, no. You're not really sorry. You're sorry, but you're not repentant. There's a big difference. And God does not think the way that we think. You know, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. It's despitefully wicked. That's what he says. He only judges us by what? The heart. He doesn't judge us by outward appearance. So we should know that we should live holy. And the Holy Spirit is the one that comes into us, directing us, who um, continues to teach us how to live holy and how to do the things that God teaches us, how to um, embrace the word down to us. But that's when we would develop a relationship with him. Amen. Amen. Right? But if you don't have a relationship, you don't know what the word means. Correct? And then, you know, when you think you know what the word means, then you got to come up here and bring a scripture. Well, you know, it says right here, but you're like, no, you need to read. What does the apostle say? Yes. Precept by precept. So, therefore, you need to read the whole thing. That's why I read the whole scripture to you to say what it's saying. Okay. Now, I got one little funny story to tell you about my brother again. This is the youngest one. So he told me, I told him one about the stripper before, right? It was last year sometime. So he told me he went to a strip club. He ain't going to strip clubs no more, y'all. And this when he was still working it out. He was like called, but he hadn't been chosen yet. Okay. So he went to a strip club. He got his little money and stuff. I was like, Lord, I've been praying for this boy. So he went to the strip club. He saw this lady. She's like, oh, she look good. So then he went and he talk, was talking to her. And he said, she sat back in this little corner where it's all dark and everything. So he went over there and he talked to her. He said, oh, what's your name? And she said, Satan. He said, no, I don't mean your, your cover, cover name or nothing. You know what you call it? Your, your name? Your dance. I don't know how to say it right. But your cover or your dance name or whatever it is. And she said, no, it's Satan. And guess what? He got up and ran out the club. Amen. And that was his last time he'd been in the strip club. As the devil met him there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, I was cracking up last night. I was laughing at this man. He cracks me up so much. But um, I said, well, good thing because, you know, if you had done something, who knows where it would have happened to you. You know, you got some kind of disease like liposipple, which is not a real disease. It's one I made up, a liposipple. Okay, because you don't know what you would have got out there. But 
as the Holy Spirit lives in us, we do not want to keep our body contaminated. Do you think that, let's think about this. Do you think we have a Holy Spirit and you continue to do the things that you do? Do you think that the Holy Spirit can leave you? You think so? Because what the Bible says, my spirit will not always strive with man. So you continue to play these games with him. Oh, yeah, he'll leave you by yourself, with yourself, with your little nasty ways. All right? And this is a real deal. I mean, think about it. But after you, you know, make your choice and you continue, it's not like you guys are not going to do anything wrong. Yeah, we said, but we don't continue to do the same thing over and over. That's why he liked David. That's why he said David is a man after my own heart. Because David sinned, but he repented and he didn't go back and do the same thing over and over again. So he repented like we had the Bathsheba as one. Now she he sent her husband to the front lines. He slept with her. She got pregnant. So he sent her husband to the front lines to get killed. Then he married her. She got was already pregnant. And then she had the baby. And God told, sent the word to Nathan the prophet. And she, who is that man? He's talking about all these things. Who is that man? It's you, my king. Doing all this stuff that you have done. So then the baby, she had a baby, but the baby was dying. And what happened? So David was on his face. He ripped his clothes. You know, he did all the praying and everything and asked God to save the baby. God said no. And then baby died. What did David do? He washed his face. He got up and he went on to do what he, you know, he went on and lived. But he did know, he was, you know, that he had this baby out of wedlock. And God said, no, this baby is not going to. And it wasn't just that. You sent your husband to the front lines to get killed. King, you was wrong, totally, because you wanted to have this woman so bad. Right? Okay, so you are chosen, so you're not going to be fornicating. You're chosen, you're not like, you, you can't lie. You're chosen, you can't drink alcohol. You're chosen, you can't commit adultery. You're chosen, you need to stay chosen. This is not something that I don't want to be chosen no more. Really? Really? You know, if you can see the other side, and you already have seen the other side, that's why you came to Jesus in the first place. Is what you was going through and all the stuff that you were going through on the other side. You ran to Jesus. I know I did. Amen. I did. I ran to him. I needed a savior. Yeah. I already knew I was busting here wide open. I you don't know some of the stuff I used to do. You wouldn't believe it. But I think I would call myself the worst sin. Because I was doing some things. But God cleaned me. Yeah. And he accepted me. Yeah, man. And he saved me. Yeah. Just like he did everybody in this room. Yeah. And he could do the same for you and anybody. He's no respecter of persons. Yeah. You know, and then the same is like, okay, so as we say, you know, God is coming. He's coming soon. Yes, he is. We don't know the day nor the hour. It's not promised to you to be alive tomorrow. Oh, God, here she go with this. I'm just to being truthful to you. You know, don't get caught. You know, when, and then everybody else is gone and you left. And I know y'all seen all these other movies. What is it? Uh, yeah, um, the movies about rapture and all this kind of stuff. Y'all seen that? And everybody's like, whatever. Yeah, okay, we'll get caught. So, and we believe that um, to be chosen is a high honor. You know, some of us get a double honor. 
to be called to minister the gospel. Amen. To be called Amen. to preach, to be called to be a sing the gospel, sing music, gospel music. Some of us called, you know, not everybody called to ministry. Some of you guys are called to have your own business. That's a calling from God. Because you're going to run into people that we would never run into to witness to. You know, that's a calling from God. You know, in, in doctors, being a doctor, being a nurse is still a calling from God. Why? Because they they treat, they heal people, give people the right medicine that they're supposed to take. But then I believe that God gives them wisdom on how to deal with their patients. You know, and so they can be called. I have a Christian doctor. They can be called to do you know, what they're called to do. So Jesus uses everybody in whatever capacity he has called them in, whether it is to be apostle or prophet or uh, evangelist, preacher and teacher, whichever your calling is, God can use you. But for him to use you, you have to be chosen. You know, and, and answer the call. Because call, they're going through the broad gate that leads to destruction. Chosen, you go through the narrow gate. You can't take nothing with you. Let's see it first. Real quick. I'm going to take that mic up because I'm going to do something there. Let's see. Let's see. You're showing that you're going to do this, but you can't carry that with you. Dropping it off. No baggage comes when you're chosen. You have to drop everything off when you're chosen and go through the straight and narrow. So all your little baggage, the stuff that you have, no, whatever your ti the titles are, unforgiveness, that's another one. Mm -hmm. You can't take unforgiveness with you through the straight and narrow. Not just not adultery, fornication, gossiping, you can't take that with you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Having bad thoughts against a person, you can't take that with you. Uh, you know, all things. What is God's love? Hate, a lying tongue. Can't be lying. You can't take that with you. Everything needs to drop off when you go through the straight and narrow. Because that's because you're chosen. You're chosen by God. And it's true. Can't take anything with you at all. Quick time. Yeah. Oh, I'm almost done. Yeah. And one thing, don't be like Jonah. Don't don't let your know, God call you to do something, and then you're like, I'm I'm gonna run away. I'm not gonna do what God. Cause where are you gonna go? God is everywhere. Amen. There's nowhere that you can hide away from God. Amen. Right. right. So I'm glad I'm, my message is over. Facebook, I'm glad to, that you guys took time and listen to this message today. If you need any prayer, um, you can go to the Facebook page for Kingdom Transformation and call the number on the screen. And we will see you next week.